Hello, everyone. We're going to get started. Uh, my name is Patricia Ringema. I'm the Alumni Engagement Officer for the Faculty of Science. And it's my absolute pleasure to be the first to welcome you all here today. Uh, this is my favorite event that we do in the Faculty of Science. We get to welcome back some exceptional people, be inspired by their stories and their successes, and be reminded why the University of Waterloo has always had a reputation for excellence. Before we get started, I would like to acknowledge that here at the University of Waterloo, much of our work takes place on traditional territory of the Neutral, Anishinaabe, and Haudenosaunee peoples. Our main campus is situated on the Haldeman Tract, the land granted to the Six Nations that includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. Our active work towards reconciliation takes place across our campuses through research, learning, teaching, and community building, and is coordinated within the Office of Indigenous Relations. Now, as I mentioned, we are here to celebrate and recognize an extraordinary group of people. So to get started with that, I'm going to introduce the Dean of Science, Dr. Chris Hauser. Uh, many of you have had the opportunity to meet Chris already. I know he shares my excitement in celebrating this award, and so I'll let him do the honors of kicking us off. Good afternoon, everyone, and again, welcome to the Faculty of Science 2024 Alumni Award Celebration. And Thank you for joining us here at the University of Waterloo as we gather to celebrate six outstanding science alumni, recipients of our 2024 Alumni Awards. As introduced by Patricia, my name is Chris Hauser, and for those of you I have not met, I am the Dean of Science here in, uh, at Waterloo, and it's my absolute pleasure to celebrate with you all today and honor some incredible science graduates. One of the highlights as Dean is the opportunity to acknowledge the successes and talent of alumni who choose Waterloo, or chose, they already had done that, they chose Waterloo as their educational institution. I see some family, friends, and colleagues here, and we welcome each of you back to campus. Your support of today's celebrated alumni is much appreciated. For that, we offer you a heartfelt thank you. I also see many faculty and staff members and again, a well, a thank you for coming out and supporting the Alumni Awards. This is truly a full circle moment as you witness former students who may have helped you along your own academic journey here at Waterloo take that center stage today. Now, the Science Alumni Achievement Awards were established when the university commemorated its 50th anniversary in 2007. At that time, Science launched the prestigious Distinguished Alumni Award and 50 alumni of honor anniversary awards, both for the purpose of honoring and recognizing significant contributions and achievements of science alumni. We since then added multiple categories that better reflect who we are as a faculty and embrace the career achievements and societal impacts of that alumni. And I'm pleased to welcome back to campus all of the alumni in attendance, including several previous alumni award recipients. Now, if I could get our previous recipients to stand up so that we can acknowledge your accomplishments, that would be great. Thank you again for joining us in this celebration, which is only made stronger by all of your continued successes. Lastly, I'd like to also acknowledge the hard work of our Alumni Awards nominating committee. The committee which is tasked with the challenge of narrowing a pool of nominations to the final list of recipients, we are proud to acknowledge at this event. It is made up of both faculty and previous award recipients, both the peers of our recipients and the mentors who taught them. Our current committee consists of Zoya Leonenko from the Department of Physics, Paul Craig from the Department of Biology, and previous alumni award recipients, Teresa McLean, BCS 08, Biochemistry and Biotechnology, Young Alumni Award 2020, and also Jason Field, BSc Chemistry 98, Distinguished Alumni from 2017. It is now my pleasure to introduce you all to Jason Field, President and CEO of Life Sciences Ontario, who is going to bring some additional words of welcome on behalf of the Alumni Awards Nominating Committee. Please join me in welcoming Jason. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, 
Wow, it's been a long time since I've been in Fed Hall. I was, uh, I was just saying to Jake, you know, I, remember, I was thinking about all the bands that I saw here. Um, and I remember seeing Sloan and Big Sugar and the Headstones. And uh, right now, anybody under the age of, age of 35 is like, who? No, the Who is even an even older band, so I'm, I'll, we can talk later. Thank you, Chris. Um, and to all of our award recipients, uh, Jake, Aaron, Cicely, Ashley, Olga, and Michael, congratulations uh, on this well-deserved recognition of your remarkable achievements. On behalf of the awards selection committee, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to everyone and express our gratitude for your support by joining us um, to celebrate. Uh, today. As Chris mentioned, I had the honor of receiving the Distinguished Alumni Award back in 2017. It's a, it was a bit different back then, though. Uh, there was some, some, some differences. So back then, there wasn't an early alumni award. It was actually called the Young Alumni Award. So my kids had a blast telling me that I won the Old Person Award for the entire day. Family has a wonderful way of keeping you grounded at events like this. And I see you all here today with your family. At the time that I received my award, um, my young nephew, uh, Cam, was in his second year of biology here at Waterloo. We're really proud that he was continuing the tradition here at Waterloo. And uh, he came out to the event, came excitedly up to me, and he said, Uncle Jay, Uncle Jay. And I was expecting a congratulations, something along that line. And he says, can you introduce me to the other awardee? He's my hero. Um, it was a very special day for me and my family, uh, as you, the University of Waterloo has had um, a profound impact in terms of shaping my life and my career in so many ways. Um, the cooperative education program gave me real-world work and research experience that certainly accelerated my graduate studies and my career. Um, really was a competitive advantage. Beyond my education, Waterloo is also where I met my wife, Laura, um, who's also a chemist. Uh, now 25 years and three kids later, um, we're still deeply connected to this institution. Our eldest daughter is right now applying to universities, and she has applied to Waterloo, although she's made it clear to us that she's not pursuing science. She's pursuing math, so at least she's in the STEM area, so we're okay with that. After receiving my award, I was invited to serve uh, on this award selection committee, and I have to say I was a bit nervous. Uh, this was a big responsibility, uh, a little bit daunting as well, choosing uh, the awardees from such an incredible pool of candidates. Um, it really is no small task. But I have to say that uh, this role has been made so much easier uh, thanks to all of the support from my fellow committee members and our amazing alumni engagement officer, uh, Patricia. Patricia, where are you? There you are. Ha round of applause for Patricia. <laughs> Thank you for everything that you do to support these awards. In closing, I just want to say thank you uh, to all of you for being here, uh, supporting these awards. Thank you to the University of Waterloo Faculty of Science for everything you do uh, for your students and for your alumni. And once again, congratulations to all of our awardees. This is your day, enjoy it. Thank you, Jason. And I'll, I'll just make a note that while well, she might be going into math, math is only useful because of the sciences. So therefore, hopefully that was not recorded for the Dean of Math. <laughs> but now let's get started with this year's awards. Today we are going to celebrate our recipients by their categories, beginning with our early alumni excellence recipients. This award was created to honor and recognize significant service, contribution, and achievements of alumni within the first 10 years following graduation. It is bestowed upon alumni who demonstrate significant contributions in professional or academic achievement or community contributions. To help me with acknowledging our first 2024 Early Alumni Excellence Award recipient, I would like to introduce Graham Murphy, Associate Professor in the Department of Chemistry, here to the podium. <laughs> you also know when your name's going to be called faculty, so make sure you're standing up near the front. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, thank you, Chris, I think. So first off, good afternoon, all. Thank you for coming. Um, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Dr. Cecily Schillingford, a 2015 biochemistry grad, and this year's recipient of the Faculty of Science um, Early Alumni Excellence Award. One of the great privileges of this job is to stay connected with students after they graduate and watch how their careers unfold. Some students follow paths to industry or academia, and occasionally there's a student who blazes their own trail, beating a new path for others to then follow. Cecily was one of those students. In addition to being a tremendous science scientist, and thank you for the presentation we had earlier today on your current work, that was wonderful. She's also a leader, a mentor, and a role model. She actually passed on doing graduate school at Harvard or Yale and chose NYU to follow her passion and position herself at the epicenter of the personal care industry. She's a passionate advocate for women and underrepresented minorities in STEM and served for seven years as the president of the NYU chapter of the Chemist Club, regularly spending her weekends leading an exhibit on biomimicry at the World Science Festival, influencing thousands of kids from underserved New York City boroughs. While a grad student, she launched NYU's first organization for black PhD scholars and led other EDI initiatives through NYU's Graduate Affairs Office. These activities earned her the 2019 NYU President's Service Award and the 2019 American Chemical Society's Young Chemists Committee Leadership Development Award. Impressively, her journey through grad school was actually featured in the periodical Nanotech New York City. After her PhD, Cecily stayed in New York and worked at the health, te health tech unicorn Roe as their first ever formulation scientist, helping the launch of their dermocosmetics brand. She then joined the rocket ship hair care company Amica, which our Sephora-minded people might know of, where she is now the director of product development and the youngest member of Amica's executive leadership team. I was very pleased to nominate Cecily for this award, and I'm very glad that she was able to join us here today. You have our sincere, sincerest congratulations. Thank you so much for this honor um, to be back at Waterloo celebrating with you all at the place that marks the inception of my academic career is really so special. Um, though I'm deeply proud of all my accomplishments, they are not mine alone. I really believe that I'm merely the product of supportive mentors, uh, excellent teachers, and generous parents who always nurtured my innate penchant for science. Um, I'd first like to thank my parents, sister, and husband though they couldn't make it here today. Um, due to travel and work, they're my foundation, my constant cheerleaders, and my heart and soul. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my gratitude for the Waterloo cheerleading team, Go Warriors, <laughs> that one I was on for all five years, who made my time here so special. Um, I'd also like to thank Ian Burgess, who was the previous Waterloo student who hired me for my first co-op job. Um, which was at Harvard's Wies Institute for Bio-Inspired Engineering. I had a great time there, and I was mentored by Taxing Wong and Joanna Eisenberg, two chemists that I deeply admire. And of course, I'd like to thank my professors who joined me today, particularly Graham Murphy. Um, one of my fondest memories of Graham was our final exam, I think, I don't know, it must have been 2013. I don't remember when I took the course, but I remember sitting in the very front row with this stack of 30 pages of spectra in front of me, and he was just listening on old AirPods that you like plug into your phone, such loud rock music that I had to be like, can you please turn that off? I'm writing a final right in front of you. Um, but he always made class so much fun, and even though it was one of the most hard, one of the hardest courses I ever took, it was definitely the most rewarding. Um, and I want to thank all the other professors here today um, that, that are here. I'm so excited to reunite with everyone. 
Um, I do want to dedicate this award to Alex Photo, who was a team member of mine um, who unfortunately was on the Waterloo cheerleading team and passed in 2014, so it's the 10th year anniversary of her passing. If you do walk past the bridge near the health center, there's a little bench with a tree that's there in her honor, and I'm really, it's really nostalgic to be back here 10 years later, and um, I just wanted to honor her as well, so thank you so much. Thank you, Cicely. And I will note, in Graham's defense, that I also feel really old now that you consider plugging into your phone to be old technology. <laughs> but congratulations on your award and our best wishes for your continued success. To recognize our second Early Alumni Excellence recipient, I'd like to welcome Josh Neufeld, professor in the Department of Biology, to the podium. Well, it's a privilege and an honor to be introducing you to Ashley Stiegelmeyer, who is uh, finished a bachelor's in 2015 and then a master's in 2017. And I have a little bit more to say about that in just a moment because I was involved, but also went on to do a PhD at the University of Guelph afterwards. And now is uh, the director of product development for Saragen, which is a relatively new company in Kitchener that I just had a tour of this morning. And so it was really exciting to see uh, all of the plants that are benefiting from microbial inoculants that Ashley is uh, responsible for helping to develop and apply and test and demonstrate for nutritious fruits and vegetables. And you're also involved, Ashley, with the uh, patent process for a couple of different microbial combinations that benefit growth of lettuce and tomatoes. And so that's really exciting to see uh, such, a, uh, such an, an active and diverse research portfolio that you're in, responsible for now. And in doing this, uh, involved with managing a team, a team that's made up of students from Waterloo. And so since beginning at Saragen in 2021, uh, you have been supervising over 20 co-op students. That's for a term uh, for that much time. It's really an outstanding track record of involvement in the faculty of science and in training of students to have transferable skills for the future. And so, so thank you for your footprint in that area and uh, for uh, helping to develop the next generation of scientists. And also, because of that, involvement in training our students, you uh, were responsible for Saragen being uh, recognized as Waterloo Co-op Employer of the Year for Impact and Research in 2022, which is an outstanding track record. Uh, Ashley, when not in the lab, does some things that might surprise you. One, being president of the Waterloo Concert Band, where she plays clarinet, also an avid gardener, baker, runner, there's a lot that you are involved with, which brings me back to your time at Waterloo where I first taught you fundamentals of microbiology, 2010. And then you showed an interest in the research in my lab and wanted to look at the microbes that were present in wastewater treatment plants, which you did, published as an undergrad, and then uh, decided that you wanted to know what was on surfaces of things. We talked about skin-associated microbes, and we decided to do the microbial biogeography of the university campus. And I had to rein you in and say, let's just focus on door handles. Forget all the other, like just find one and do that well, and you did. And so that was another publication that came out of your undergraduate, and then as a master's student, as if sampling humans was not enough, cohabiting couples, you also decided to sample all mammals as a collaboration with the chair of our department that we'll be hearing from soon, Dr. Kirsten Mueller. Uh, and so it became lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, and that was what I remember you saying many times because this was uh, hundreds of thousands of samples that you processed gleefully. And so that brings me to the characteristics that make me not at all surprised that you're here today. And that is consistent dedication hard work, insight, industriousness, uh, and I often say to others around that the grass does not grow green around Ashley. 
the amount of activity and busyness uh, that surrounds you just leads you to being an, an outstanding uh, representative of the Faculty of Science where you are and whatever you are doing. And so uh, this is uh, a, such a well-deserved award and a, a real treat to be able to welcome you up here and congratulate you for this recognition as an early alumni. Congratulations, Ashley. Thank you, Josh, so much for those kind words. I spent seven wonderful years at the University of Waterloo between my undergraduate and master's. And I realize it's actually been seven years since that I went forth into the world, and today it truly felt like coming home. Uh, when I started here in 2010, one of my first lectures was in uh, Josh's uh, intro to microbiology class, and after that, nothing was ever the same. I completely fell in love with the invisible world that's around us and how we can harness the power of microorganism to improve the lives of all global citizens. Um, from there, the University Waterloo's co-op program was absolutely fundamental in me gaining the skills and technology that I needed um, to advance as a young scientist. Uh, through this co-op program, I was able to go around Ontario into a range of different labs. I actually started as the Sanger sequencing technician, where you go a thousand tiny base pairs at a time to help people see Sequence. In the last decade, the technology has advanced so far that instead of a massive large machine to do a thousand base pairs at a time, I can actually hold a sequencer in the pocket and travel it around with me. This would give you 20 gigabase pairs of DNA in a single day. The power that the technology has advanced in the last decade for biology has been incredible, and I can't wait to see how the field advances in the years to come. Waterloo was so foundational, both through co-op, but also the Velocity program. In the past three years, um, I was joined uh, Danielle and Matthew Rose as part of Serogen in creating a company that we aim to completely revolutionize North America's food system. We believe in the power of harnessing the invisible world around us to improve the nutrition and the quantity of food that people can access. Um, in partnership with Dr. Bernie Glick um, from the Department of Biology, we've taken decades of research from the University of Waterloo and created uh, beneficial microbial inoculants that can grow healthy, nutritious food. Um, from there, again, giving back to Waterloo's co-op, we've been so thankful to be able to employ the brilliant scientists that all the professors here are currently training today. Um, none of this would be possible without um, the University of Waterloo. I'd love to thank uh, the committee, uh, the awards committee for today for considering this project of worth. Additionally, I'd also really love to thank Velocity. They're an incredible system. The amount of innovation that is coming out of this university would not be possible with the excellent support and generous donation and ecosystem. Ideas truly start here. I'd also love to thank NSERC and CIHR funding bodies. None of the research that Josh mentioned would have been possible without these organizations valuing Canadian researchers um, and the science that's happening within Canada. I'd also love to thank uh, Dr. Sarah Wooten, who was my uh, doctorate advisor. The mentorship she gave me was instrumental of learning how to manage large projects and students under me. Um, after Sarah, I would also love to thank the entire team at Sarogen, uh, including Danielle and Matt, for being incredible co uh, founders. And I'd also like to thank our entire research team. Their dedication and the passion that they bring into making the world a better place every day inspires me to keep going in the lab, whether it's with a tiny sequencer, a pipette, or generating the next ideas that are going to revolutionize our food systems. Thank you so much to everyone here and the University of Waterloo uh, for supporting the sciences.
Thank you, Cicely, and congratulations on your award, and I look forward to working with you as part of our new externship program that we are launching this coming year. And again, best wishes on your continued success. To recognize our second early alumni, oh, I went, did the wrong person, didn't I? I need to fold my piece of paper when I finished reading that thing. Congratulations again, Cicely. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Ashley. Congratulations. And, and also, we look forward to working with you as part of our new externship program in this coming year. Our next award we are going to be presenting is the brand new Contribution to Humanity Award. This award was created to honor and recognize significant service, contribution, and achievements of our science alumni. In a way, we hadn't historically been able to do so to celebrate this in the past. This prestigious award is bestowed upon alumni who demonstrate significant accomplishments in community impact, volunteerism, leadership advocacy, and humanitarian endeavors. These contributions can include, but are not limited to, significant sustained involvement in volunteerism, philanthropy, idea, inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility, highly visible community service that is clearly recognized, proven impact, whether it be locally, regionally, nationally, or international, or the promotion of science. To help me recognize our first ever recipient of this new award, I would like to invite Kirsten Mueller, Chair of the Department of Biology, to the podium. Thank you very much, Chris. So it is my absolute pleasure today um, to congratulate Olga Shmyadenko for um, this award of contribution to humanity. So I first met Olga a couple years ago. We were both together on a panel for International Women's Day. And I remember in that moment after the panel ended, walking away and just thinking, wow, this is someone who just exemplifies my personal values, but a hundredfold. Um, so, uh, Olga has created Wow Women, which highlights and amplifies the amazing stories of inspiring and strong women worldwide, from Chile to South Africa and beyond. And these women that she profiles are striving to make this planet a better place for everyone. And since the start of the war in Ukraine, Olga has been profiling women in Ukraine who are fighting on the front line, and this includes students, mothers, teachers, scientists, and even more. And I got a little lost on the website this morning and a little choked up as I read these incredible stories of these women who are doing what they can in their country. She has also been assisting and fundraising for Ukrainian causes. She has volunteered on the Polish border amid the refugee crisis through fundraising and helping with translation. Her work and commitment to amplify the voices of women, particularly those in Ukraine, is inspiring, and this award is so well-deserved. Congratulations, Olga. Please come up to the podium. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's great to be here among all of you. Um, I was just thinking about um, what inspired me to come here from Cape Town, where I currently live, uh, and travel to Waterloo this weekend. Uh, and one of the main reasons, I would say, um, was to thank Waterloo University and Waterloo Science uh, for what I'm doing in life right now. Uh, one word that I thought of on the flight um, that has been a constant in my life has been uh, audacity. And uh, there's several examples that I can point to specifically when it comes to seeing audacity and witnessing it and then also partaking in it. Um, first major example for me for audacity was seeing my mom uh, bring us to Canada as an immigrant from Ukraine 
and uh, being embraced by Canadians, learning the language, graduating high school, and then applying to Waterloo. Um, I chose Waterloo because it allowed me to essentially help um, uh, help my mom financially because Waterloo Co-op program, as you know, is the best. Um, then Waterloo Science showed me audacity because I saw the peers around me applying for amazing positions in the Arctic, Dubai, Switzerland, Hong Kong, um, and I had audacity to apply for a job in New York, and I got it. And uh, then I moved to New York, and I was in the HIV vaccine development field for 10 years there. Then it was audacity to leave public health and uh, to travel with my partner and spend six years working on Wild Women, where I've um, interviewed and highlighted and sh shown spotlight on women in over 50 countries. I think I have over 500 women now that I've interviewed. And uh, finally was the chain reaction of audacious de decisions that f brought me full circle back to Ukraine, where on uh, February 24th, 2022, Russia invaded in a full scale and attacked us. And to this day, November, it continues to bomb, terrorize, occupy, and destroy my homeland. So it was the audacity then to jump into the unknown and go to the border um, to feed my people, kids, and you know, witness firsthand among Polish people who were next to me, the world, probably Europe's worst humanitarian refugee crisis since World War II. Uh, and today, it's uh, the audacity that I had to leave behind, you know, put on a different hat, uh, and I'm currently doing f volunteering for Ukrainian military. Uh, and these are the guys and women who are just like us in this audience, who have families, who have careers, who have promotions they were up for, and now they are learning how to fly drones and use drone consoles. Uh, they're learning how to use tourniquets to self-administer first aid. Um, there are women who I speak with who are learning how to evacuate um, fallen comrades from you know middle of the forest. Um, I am trying. I'm working with a nonprofit in Kiev and fundraising for them and helping in any which way I can. So this is my reality now, um, but through all the audacious decisions, through witnessing audacity, I want to thank Waterloo because it was kind of the first stepping stone for me, and uh, Waterloo Science. I, I guess I'm the true SciBiz sci alumni because I never really chose one or the other path, but here we are, and uh, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you for uh, giving me attention, the award, and uh, I want to say please support Ukraine, read the stories, and if you have questions, just send me an email and let me know. Thank you so much. <laughs>Thank you, Olga, and congratulations, and really excited about working with you in the future to expand our Global Perspectives of Science, or GPS, program to South Africa, and hopefully for 2027. The next award category we are going to recognize is the Contribution to Science Award. This award was created to honor and recognize significant service, support, and contributions of alumni. It is bestowed upon alumni who demonstrate significant contributions to the faculty in their proven and significant citizenship to the University of Waterloo, which includes, but is not limited to, increasing the profile and accessibility of science, generating and supporting science knowledge and awareness, volunteering, mentoring, and advocacy. To help me with acknowledging our 2024 Contributions to Science Award winner, I'd like to introduce Derek Shipper, Associate Professor and Canada Research Chair in Organic Material Synthesis, to the podium. Thank you, uh, and it's my uh, absolute pleasure to uh, introduce and congratulate uh, Dr. Michael Kerr on this very well-deserved on contribution to science. 
Michael was born in Met, France in 1961 to Canadian parents. Uh, he then returned back to Canada in 1963 and moved to what would be his family homestead on 125 acres of woodland outside of North Bay, Ontario. He attended the University of Waterloo and graduated uh, his, with his bachelor's degree in 1985 and then did his PhD at the University of Hawaii. Uh, and if you corner uh, Mike later on, he has lots of excellent stories about uh, Hawaii. I'm sure he'd be happy to pass on. In 1993, he took up uh, his uh, independent academic career at Acadia University uh, and built a very strong research program uh, working entirely with undergraduates. And then in 1999, uh, he moved to uh, Western University, what was at the time the University of Western Ontario, uh, and took up a position as assistant professor there and gained tenure for a second time, not too many of us can say that they got tenure twice, uh, and was pr promoted to a full professor in 2005. Over the past three decades, Dr. Kerr has established himself as a leading organic chemist in Canada and globally, uh, has published over 100 influential papers and delivered approximately 100 invited lectures. Michael has received several awards, including the Premier's Research Excellence Award, uh, a Faculty Scholar Award and the Alfred Bader Award for, uh, from the Canadian Society of Chemistry. Beyond his impressive research accomplishments, Dr. Kerr has made strong contributions through service and leadership. He has served as Secretary for the International Society of Heterocyclic Chemistry and as a Section Chair for the NSERC Discovery Grants Program in Chemistry. Currently, he sits on the Editorial Advisory Board for the prestigious Journal of Chemistry Frontiers. His work at Western University encompasses two main areas, the cycloaddition reactions of donor acceptor cyclopropanes and two, natural product total synthesis, Com uh, <clears throat> completing the synthesis of over 30 target molecules. Uh, my personal favorite is nacodomerin A. That was a really nice read, a 2007 Jack's paper for any of the chemists who want to uh, look up that paper. For those chemists in the audience, you know how impressive Mike's research is. Total synthesis presents some of the most daunting challenges in all of chemistry, and is difficult to pursue even with unlimited resources. Mike pursued these efforts against all odds in Canada and has had a lot of success. Total synthesis also provides some of the best, best opportunity and training ground for mentoring students uh, in chemistry. And Mike has left in his wake an impressive track record of training some of the best students uh, the country, in this country and beyond, many of whom who have graduated from Mike's group uh, and have gone on to have impressive careers of, in their own right. On a personal note, when I first met Mike as a brand new graduate student, uh, just started my graduate degree at the University of Ottawa, I attended COMSPOC, uh, which is a regional organic chemistry conference. This particular conference was hosted at the University of Western Ontario. Uh, and my first impression was my, of Mike was, who is this motorcycle driving lumberjack who knows a ton of organic chemistry? Um, my second impression of Mike uh, actually came from his students and I was just super impressed uh, with his research group and the quality of science that they were putting out uh, and as well, they were having a lot of fun doing it. Uh, and so uh, Mike really fostered uh, the type of uh, the type of group that I uh, kind of shoot for in my own research group now as well. His dedication to science promotion and outreach has amplified the impact impact of his work and increased the profile uh, and accessibility of chemistry. In recognition of his transformative research, impactful service, and exemplary mentorship, I am uh, honored to present Dr. Mike Kerr with a contribution to Science Award. Congratulations. Well, to say this is a pleasure is an understatement. Um, I've, you know, 
Derek mentioned a few awards. This one maybe is my favorite because of the time I had at Waterloo. I, um, I came from the sticks, basically, up in North Bay, and had a, but I had a very good chemistry uh, teacher. And when I was applying to Waterloo, I actually applied to chemical engineering. And um, my teacher explained to me that if you like chemistry, chemical engineering is not the way to go. You can actually study chemistry. And I said, is that that's a thing? So I, and I'm glad I did. When I arrived here, I got to, I had six work terms. I, I worked from Calgary to Thompson, Manitoba, and around Ontario, and had many excellent professors. I'd like to highlight two. One, of course, is Vic Sneakus. I had my last co-op term in his lab. I, I said, wow, I want more of this, and I did my fourth year project in his lab. And I said, I want more of this, and I knew I was gonna go to grad school at that point. And he was very supportive in my, my selection which was a bit of an adventurous one because I, it could have been terrible. I didn't know much about the University of Hawaii, but I got to work with uh, uh, Mark Tias, who was a Harvard, recent Harvard uh, graduate and has done amazing work. And then I, I got to work with his benchmate, Casey Nicolau at the Scripps Research Institute. And again, these are people I'd like to acknowledge. Um, I'd also like to uh, acknowledge uh, Professor Morris Cheer who's retired now, but he, he, was pro he had to have been my favorite uh, organic lecturer. I just, I, I just loved his class. Sat in the front row, totally geeked out. And uh, it, was, it, it, was, it was awesome. Um, I would like to thank my graduate students, who um, uh, Derek mentioned, they, they, and anybody who does research in an academic environment knows that they deserve most of the credit. They're, they're, they're tireless, uh, they work hard, and they're dedicated, and I I'm certainly wouldn't be here without their, their, their hard work. Um, and then, I, I know I'm gonna forget something, but I'm not gonna forget to thank my wonderful partner, Jin, who's here, because she, uh, she centers me, and is my, uh, she's my rock. And so I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm truly fortunate to have her by my side. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I should say. I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm so grateful for, for uh, Waterloo. For, I, had, I can't think of a bad th uh, time I had here as an undergraduate. It was fantastic, uh, both recreationally, uh, inner tube water polo, broom ball, as well as the science, of course. And so I would, I would like to um, I just finish off by th thanking uh, the, the Faculty of Science so much for, for this award. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Congratulations, Mike, and thank you for your continued contribution to the Faculty of Science. The last court category that we are going to recognize in today's program is the Distinguished Alumni category. This award was created to honor and recognize the significant service, contribution, and achievements of our alumni. The prestigious award is bestowed upon alumni who demonstrate significant contributions in one or more of the following areas professional or academic achievement, which recognizes the accomplishments of Waterloo Science alumni relating to career success, significant recognition, leadership or advisory roles, and visible success beyond industry seg the industry segment, as well as contributions to community, which recognizes the accomplishments of Waterloo Science alumni in volunteer leadership, humanitarian endeavors, and proven impact within community and public service. Recognizing our 2024 Distinguished Alumni Award recipients will be John Corrigan, Chair of the Department of Chemistry, and Kirsten Mueller, De Chair of the Department of Biology. John, would you like to start us off? Thank you very much, Chris, and good afternoon, one and all. It is indeed uh, a pleasure to be with you here this afternoon to celebrate uh, Sciences alumni. Um, it is my sincere pleasure uh, this afternoon to introduce Dr. Jake Redder as the 2024 Distinguished Alumni Award recipient. This is going to be a bit of a mouthful, so bear with me for a moment. Dr. Redder is Director, New Ventures in the Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth College in New Hampshire, USA. He is co-founder, director, and chief executive officer of Seldara Medical, and he is the principal investigator for NIH-supported Driven Accelerator Hub. During these next few minutes, I would like to convey to you the impact that Jake has made and continues to make on the world stage. And the only criticism I'm gonna give this afternoon is, Patricia, the time limit you've given us makes this an incredible challenge because Jake's 
uh, accomplishments are far wide and many. So he graduated from U Waterloo with a BSc in chemistry, first class honors in 1997, and it turns out we overlapped a little bit during our time here. And he did his fourth year research pro uh, project with Linda Nazar during that time. He followed that with a PhD in chemistry at Purdue University in the United States, as well as Ludwig's Maximilian Universität in Munich, Germany. And it was during his doctoral studies uh, in Germany that Jake joined a venture capital firm and since then, he has harnessed what could be described as an exceptional innovation and entrepreneurial spirit into healthcare, using his foundational training in chemistry, which everyone agrees is the central science. Jake says it, so it's got to be true this afternoon, to launch discovery beyond the laboratory setting. And he brings innovative research and researchers together to address global challenges in human health. So some history, in 2008 he founded the New Ventures office out of which he founded it at, at uh, Dartmouth and he co-founded the company Saldara. And to quote, Saldara secures partnerships with inventors and their institutions and provides the developmental, financial and business acumen to bridge the gaps between discovery and clinical impact. This is a key, key uh, component. Saldara has been the fastest growing company in New Hampshire for three years in a row, and Jake has been recognized with a New Hampshire Small Business Person of the Year honor at a national level, Tibbetts Award, that recognizes companies and organizations that exemplify the very best in small business innovation research and small business technology transfer achievements. Saldara was one of the first to bring CRT cell therapies into the clinic and now advances therapies on several fronts, including dementia, autoimmune diseases, and many, many more. What I would also like to highlight this afternoon is Saldara's charitable contributions that have led to STEM educational and research opportunities for many of the state's youth. And starting with a significant donation made by Jake and his spouse, since 2021, the Fanger Center provides exceptional research opportunities for adolescents. And this center is named in honor of Jake's former mentor. Also impactful is Saldara's fellowship program that brings students into their company as paid employees for a full year, young students. And from what I understand, this is in some way um, highlighted or, or um, promoted by Waterloo's co-op model here. These are but two of Jake's commitments to giving to the community, both locally and beyond. He gives his time by serving on the boards of the New Hampshire Academy of Science, to healthcare companies, as a member of the inaugural United States Small Business Association Invention, Innovation and Entrepreneurship Advisory Committee, to name but a few. I'm going to steal unabashedly a quote that Jake gave for his uh, interview for the part of this recognition for his alumni award. And he writes, or says, being at Waterloo, I couldn't help but take on the culture there. At Waterloo, everyone quite simply expects to take on big problems, do new things, and have global impact. The thread of innovation has connected everything I've done since, and this is clearly, clearly true. It's wonderful that you're here with us this afternoon. It's super wonderful that you're here with two of your children. That's great. I'm hoping they're enjoying themselves. And uh, Jake, it is my sincere honor to congratulate you and to recognize your incredible achievements across multiple levels with a Distinguished Alumni Award. Please accept my congratulations. Goodness. All right. Can you hear me okay? There we go. This is going to be the most wholesome thing I've ever done in Fed Hall. All right. So, good afternoon. Thank you for coming, and thank you for coming. And you and you. And it's actually be more efficient if I just thank you all for coming. So, um, you comprise the University of Waterloo. I've really leaned into this U Waterloo uh, branding. I loved it. Love it all over the campus. You're the targets of my gratitude. You are the people who teach people like me how to be scientists. Um, you're the people who show people like me how to innovate. And you demonstrate each day that 
limits, while useful in calculus, are, are double-edged in life. So thank you, thank you, a mole of thank yous. Uh, the University of Waterloo is Canada's perennial innovation powerhouse. And I've spent my career in innovation, and these things are almost certainly related. But what exactly is innovation? There are many definitions. The one I've used for years is the application of invention. Doing research is fine, inventing is fine, but until you've applied that invention for some societal good, all you've done at best is conceptual. To innovate, we have to do the research, we have to make the inventions, and then we have to apply them for impact. And this is what this institution is best at bit of a quant, and so of course I wanted to know how best at it you really are here in 2024, so off to gather the data I went. I fired up my trusty patent analysis software, uh, searched for Canadian assignees. I saw UBC, McGill, Toronto. I scrolled down and down, and there was the University of Waterloo, a few spots below Guelph. Still have a rivalry, right? Um, patent analysis software, while powerful, can be complicated to use while in the fetal position, so I got up, dried my eyes, and dug a little deeper. Uh, that is when I was reminded about Policy 73. The University of Waterloo doesn't have a lot of patents because the University of Waterloo allows its inventors and innovators to own their own intellectual assets. What a great idea. It is fair, it's equitable, it's definitely in harmony with truth. I've personally seen the IP policies of hundreds of universities globally, and this is unique. This is powerful. You saw how IP policy should be, and you made it so. Great, but is it working? A quarter billion in annual research funding, the top comprehensive research university in Canada, the world's largest free incubator, super impressive, I was just there. It's also Canada's most productive incubator. Uh, the country's top university for founders, I love that one. Obviously, it's working. Thanks in part to an innovative approach to innovation itself. That is how you have attracted and retained the top innovators on the planet. And innovation is what keeps this institution out in front. And so I've spent my career on this topic, and once again, I'm here learning things at the University of Waterloo. There's nothing inherently wrong with my innovation is the application of invention definition. But when I see everything that's going on here, I'm struck that innovation goes so much deeper. It's to see the world not as it is, but as it should be, and then to make it so. It only took me these last few decades to figure out what you, Waterloo, have been doing all along. Albert Einstein was famously a slow learner, and look at me, I'm slower still. Uh, silliness, puns, dad jokes, that's how we Canucks cope when we're overwhelmed, right? And that is exactly what I am. But I'll be serious for a moment. This wonderful honor from my wonderful alma mater is truly humbling. And unlike that horrible statistical thermodynamics class that you made me take, this is something I will never forget. So thank you all for being here this afternoon for this award and for the great things you do every day. Congratulations, Jake. So it is my pleasure to provide the Distinguished Alumni Award to Dr. Aaron Spicer. Um, Aaron completed uh, two degrees here at the University of Waterloo, a Bachelor's of Science in Biomedical Sciences within Biology, and also her Master's degree under the supervision of Dr. Mungo Marsden. I also think I remember that she was bravely accessional during her master's degree for Biology 302 Histology, one of our bigger classes. Um, currently, she is an early career clinician researcher and an assistant professor at the School or Department of Medicine at Western University. And during the pandemic, Erin created a virtual care clinic for COVID-19 patients. 
and this provided an essential service and closed a gap for patients who were suffering from COVID and actually prevented them from coming to the hospital and further overloading hospitals. And these patients received care in their homes. They were provided with rapid assessment, monitoring, longitudinal care, and oxygen if they needed it. Um, the clinic, um, and with all this, it prevented them from, from going into emergency rooms while they were ill. Furthermore, she's recently created the Walk More program. Um, and this is for patients who are in the hospital. And as we know, patients that are in the hospital for long periods of time often lose a lot of mobility, lose a lot of their muscle mass. And this program pairs volunteers who are well-trained to support these patients and get the patients up and moving around the hospital and regaining their mobility and their muscle mass and being able to leave the hospital, which of course further prevent, prevents deterioration when they get home, such as falling and so on. We know that walking has incredible benefits increases physical ability, and this of course has the, the, the component of social interaction, which is, is really important as well. Probably a message for all of us to get up from our desks every day and maybe walk around the building a little bit more. Um, and Erin um, continues her, her research focusing on older patients and ensuring longevity and uh, the ability uh, to move. And so congratulations, Erin. I'd like to welcome you up now. Thank you very much for having me this afternoon. It's been such a lovely day, um, productive actually. I had a number of meetings this morning um, that fit in with my frailty research and my delirium research. Um, so thank you to the organizing committee for helping me make the most of my return to Waterloo. Uh, it's been a really special day. One of the great opportunities that I had earlier today was to join the Women in Science lunch. When I first came to Waterloo back in 20, or sorry, 2000, I, Nice try, Erin. Uh, 2002, um, women in science weren't as abundant as they are now. There wasn't as many professors, there wasn't as many women PhD students, but the, the women who were here were phenomenal. The Dr. Barb Moffitts, the Mullers, the Christine Duponts, they had high expectations. And I remember in my master's degree, we, we talked about how it didn't really bother us that they had really high expectations because they always worked to their own standard. And now, as a physician that teaches residents and medical students, when I hear the, the residents whispering to the students, oh, she has really high expectations, but don't worry, she works as hard as you do, I think it's the greatest compliment in the world. And I saw that amongst my colleagues at lunch today, is that all the women in science uh, that I had the opportunity to, to eat with, all had that in common, that we were not satisfied with the status quo, we were impatient with how things currently stand, and everybody was willing to fight for something better. And so I thank my, my colleagues earlier today for a really wonderful opportunity. When I came to Waterloo, I was full of determination. I knew exactly what I wanted to do after I finished uh, my biomedical sciences degree. I wanted to be a physician. And I wanted to help people. And that, that stemmed from the two wonderful people uh, at table number three here, my parents. But I didn't know that I needed to wear so many hats as a physician. So being a clinician at the bedside, best job in the world. If anybody's considering switching careers, that's the one I would recommend. And as mentioned, Mungo created that opportunity for me to learn how to be a teacher um, by sharing the, uh, the opportunity to teach histology. I had the opportunity to discover what being a humanitarian was like. Uh, Waterloo supported me uh, in pursuing my first medical mission as a second year undergraduate student here. We traveled to Haiti 
and that work has continued. I still uh, practice medicine in Guatemala, um, and that, that has never left me, um, that, that profound experience as a, as a second year student. And then there was my master's degree, which really enforced for me that what well, Western blots was not what I wanted to do. It did reinforce for me that I wanted to answer big questions in a rigorous and well-informed way. Now, my great joy is that I get to spend 50% of my time doing quality improvement patient safety research. So not the same as what Mungo and I were up to. But I get to make life better for patients in a scientific and rigorous manner. If you hadn't noticed, uh, in the last eight years since I became a physician, it's been kind of a hard time in healthcare. Um, even before the pandemic, we had an aging population, we had resource constraints, um, we had um, this propensity not to have a readiness for change in our healthcare systems. And then the pandemic came along and all the research, and I mean all the research I was doing, shut down in a day. And so we pivoted. We wanted to use that um, sense of innovation and creativity that so many of the other award winners uh, spoke of today to find a different way of doing things, to untether ourselves from the classic approach to medicine and think differently. That hasn't changed. Post-pandemic, we still have the same problems. We still have an aging population. We still have resource constraints. We have a, a kind of um, inability to, tell, to think differently about how we provide care in this province. And so my great joy every day is to be a disruptor. And coming back to my luncheon today, that's what the women in that luncheon were. They were disruptors. They are not satisfied to continue to accept the way things have been and are, and are looking for a better way forward. And so I congratulate my award winners. I congratulate my luncheon mates. Um, thank you so much for having me. It's been a real privilege and honor to accept this award today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Erin, and congratulations again. Our most sincere congratulations to all of our recipients recognized today. All of you, and indeed all of the alumni in the room today, are a testimony and an inspiration to all of us in the Faculty of Science. Your accomplishments are diverse and a testament to the quality of education the University of Waterloo's Faculty of Science provides, and we're exceptionally proud of your contributions. In fact, all of our recipients today are examples of ideal alumni, and in recognition of that, of these ideal alumni, we have started a new program here in the Faculty of Science called the Ideal Scholars Program, where we recognize students who go above and beyond the classroom in innovation, discovery, engagement, and application and leadership. And, and what we heard today is we've heard about people who have made a difference in terms of refugees in the Ukraine, service in Guatemala, as well as a study abroad, I believe, in your second year as an undergraduate, supporting entrepreneurship, innovative research, varsity sports. These are the things that give you those professional, those executive skills, and it's only at Waterloo do you actually have that opportunity to get those skills and ultimately to make our world a better place. And we look forward to seeing all, your accomplish all of what you're about to achieve in the future and make sure to support our students as they become ideal alumni in the future and also make those contributions to a better world. Now this concludes the formal program for the afternoon. Thank you once again for being part of the celebration and if you know any rock star science alumni, ideal alumni, who is deserving of one of these alumni awards, please consider nominating them so that we can celebrate their accomplishments in future years. Thank you so much, family, friends, and colleagues, for joining us today. We welcome you to continue celebrating and enjoy refreshments and conversations as you congratulate our newest Science Alumni Award recipients. Now, just as some um, little bit of business, can we have all of the award winners with their, with their uh, awards to come up to the front for photographs with their nominators so that we can, um, can recognize this event? 
But again, thank you everyone. It's raining outside, it's gonna get dark really soon, sorry. And uh, so be careful as you're driving back wherever you may be going tonight. Congratulations again, everyone.